brothers. It's been a while that I've done a MGTOW exclusive, but the Me Too feminists have inspired me to actually do an exclusive. I'm going to call this one, this ramble, Me Too doing the Lord's work. I said when this Me Too thing first started, what a few months ago, when Harvey Weinstein was being taken out and some of the Hollywood folks were being taken out. I said during a hangout that if I were in charge of MGTOW recruitment, MGTOW advertising, MGTOW public relations, I would think this would be a bonanza instead of, of a fiasco. The hardest thing for MGTOW to do is get traction, be heard, have people seek you out. And the hardest thing for MGTOW to do is to spread because it's such an antithetical philosophy. It's a refusing fiat philosophy. And that's very hard to get traction, except amongst a very few, you know, the the burnouts. The burnouts are normally the easiest because <laughs> they're desperate. Whereas the young, fresh recruits, the the blue pill recruits that have taken the blue pill and have the scales from the over their eyes, very difficult in a relatively calm environment. And if the feminists and the women were smart, they would slowly keep indoctrinating the males, slowly keep indoctrinating the men to keep them on the plantation, keep them in the matrix. But feminine wiles and feminine thinking as it is, is always greedy. It's always ravenous. The female Psyche is the dark side of the force. It's never balanced. It's never enough. It wants more and more and more power. And the Me Too hashtag and the Me Too forest fire was just too great. The wave was just too great to resist. It's something that where women love what vengeance. Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned, and they're not physically able to take vengeance out on men, but they can do it socially. And when that social gets into the financial, where you can not only ruin a, a man's reputation, but all, all, also ruin his livelihood, his physical being, it's just too much. And like I said, the ability to wield sovereignty over men even temporarily, it's too much. It's too much to resist. It's like Eve and the apple from the tree and from the fruit of knowledge. She wanted to know. She wanted to know what Adam wanted to know. So what did she do? The, the, the fruit was just too, too tempting to resist. She couldn't help it. Same thing with this. The, the, the forbidden fruit, the lawyers call it the bite of the forbidden fruit, where police officers and lawyers something so tempting, even though you know you can't use it, you can't accept it, you can't take it, you can't take a bite of it because it's going to lead you down a path that you can't recover from. It's so tempting that you have to take it because you think you can get away with it. And right now, because of the wave, that strong wave that's basically rolling over men, over prominent men, it's not just the little guys. It's, you know, they've been rolling over little guys forever, you know, in the college campuses, in the high schools, you know, getting men fired on, you know, on jobs. They've been doing that for years. But to get the big guys, the untouchables and taking them down, that was just too tempting. That was just way too tempting. But they forgot about their goals. The ultimate goal is for men's compliance. That's what they want. And fear can get you compliance if you have force. And women think they have force. They mistakenly believe that they have force when all they have is fear. Fear without force gets you retreat. And what women want is compliance. You cannot get compliance with fear without force, without force of arms to actually make someone do something. And so men are taking the preventative choice. They're walking away. 
and where they're walking away to. They're walking away from gynocracy, from the gynocentrism over the MGTOW, over the IBMOR, even to a smaller extent, the MRAs. The MRAs can't really do anything because the MRAs are, are slow moving political force, whereas MGTOW is immediate. MGTOW is, is the immediate safety. Get yourself into the maximum position of advantage and safety. What is that? That's Ibmor, that's MGTOW. And in some cases, as an extreme, t uh, temporarily become a MGTOW monk, which during, the, during this, this Me Too frenzy, this red scare of the Me Too's, this witch hunt, maximum safety and advantage is MGTOW monk, is asexual. And while you're at it, bring your buddy along to keep him out of the fire. Because the victims list grows long. After they shoot the generals, what do you think they're going to do with the rest of the troops? If they can get their hands on them. Well, if you wondered how are you going to get these blue pill men to wake up? How are you going to get the scales to drop from their eyes? And you wondered what was it going to take for men to start walking away? The women themselves have laid that gift on your lap right before Christmas. Santa has shimmied his white fat behind down the chimney and dropped the greatest MGTOW package since MGTOW has been invented right under the Christmas tree. He didn't even want the milk and cookies. He said, this is on me. So the feminists, the feminists that know better are shaking in their boots because they know what's getting ready to happen. All of a sudden, all those doors that were open are going to be closed. All those male mentors, those simps that wanted a sniff of the vagina and were willing to serve at their beck and call just for the worship of the feminine are looking at that woman with a side eye. They're looking at her like the viper that she is. Because now men get to see the amorality of women in the headlines, in the Twitter, on TV in full force. The true nature of women is actually coming out and is actually displaying itself. There is no loyalty with your woman. There is no relationship with your woman. There's only a situationship. And most time you can manage that situation ship if you happen to want to engage in it. it takes a lot of work, but you can manage it. But in this environment, one false move on that minefield, you're going to get blown up. And you know, look at the list. Charlie Rose, Matt Lauer, Harvey Weinstein, Tavis Smiley, John Conyers. And the list goes on and on and on. It hasn't stopped. Al Franken, the King Simp himself from Minnesota, who has been a loyal liberal to women's causes, gay, LGBTQ, and any feminist causes. Al Franken has been loyal. What happened to him? There is no loyalty. There is no relationship. There's a situationship. And when the situationship didn't line up, guess what happened? They off with his head. And then you would you would hear the masculinists talk about alpha males and how alpha males can, with their sheer alphaness and their sheer skill, control a relationship and keep women from doing to the to them what the, what has been done to the beta guys for years. And as I said, what yes means yes, and this is just an extension of yes, yes means yes. Yes means yes was meant for the alpha males. No means no was meant for who? The beta males. So the so-called beta males, the so-called unwanted, have now been joined by the ranks of the top-notch select alpha males. You look at what happened on the NFL network. Executives and three alpha former all-pro football players all got taken out by wardrobe stylists. Not even proof, just her word. Russell Simmons, the rap legend, billionaire, got taken out by some unknown women. You have these blue pill congressmen 
that for years have heaped misery upon men's back in the courts with child support, with welfare, with divorce. Now they're ducking for cover because the women have turned on them too. They didn't believe MGTOWs. They didn't believe immors that women are amoral. Women are amoral pragmatists, emotional amoral pragmatists, which is worse because there's no control. They saw the slightest bit of opening, the slightest bit of meat. And what did they do? They rushed through it and they're wielding it like clubs, hacking and smashing every man they can that's in sight, starting with the alpha males and working their way down. I've heard out pickup artists and dating coaches and, and alpha males start sounding like MGTOWs. I see the libtards and the trad cons in full retreat because they can't trust their women. I haven't heard for the last two weeks, I haven't heard one MGTOW joke amongst men. All I've heard is maybe they were right. And these are the hardest of hardcore so-called alpha males, blue pill alpha males that love women. These so-called men that say they can pick up any woman and have sex with her and without consequences. Guess what? Like MGTOWs and other people like me have been saying that is bullshit. There's always consequences. So all of a sudden MGTOWs aren't gay anymore. They're not cellar dwellers or neck beards anymore. A lot of them are saying we're all MGTOW now or MGTOW in this environment is the way forward. That women are dangerous and you have to watch your back. You have to, if you're going to have sex, be very careful. If you have something to lose, be extra careful. Because some women are want any kind of so-called sexual harassment to be a hate crime. So it doesn't have to be on the job. It could be anywhere. These women want the universal subordination of men. And the only way they can subordinate you if you allow them to and you stick around in their in their environment long enough for them to try. So all of a sudden, the hatred of MGTOW has become a love fest. And at the very least, begrudging respect. So all I can say to my MGTOW brethren, my MGTOW companions. Is Merry Christmas. And happy me too day. As Caesar once said before he became a Christian, when he was rallying his troops, he said, in this sign I shall conquer. He did. I'm saying to all MGTOWs out there in this environment, in this hashtag, we shall conquer. That's all I got. This is BGS out, and I'll see you, brethren, on the next one. Peace.